In this video, we will create from scratch an income statement in Excel. Now, if you'd like to follow along with me and work as I do, then download the template file for free in the link in the description. Now let's get started. Here we are looking at our fictional income statement for Mangoes LLC. In columns B through F, we will be creating the actual income statement. And in columns H through L, we will be inputting the assumptions that the income statement will be based on. So we need to start off with our revenue. How are we going to find sales? Well, we have to consider how many mangoes we are going to sell and the sales price of each mango. So let's assume that in year one, we're going to sell 500,000 mangoes. And then in year two, we're going to sell 600,000. Year three is going to be a big year of growth for us. So we're going to sell 800,000. And finally, we're going to sell 1 million mangoes in the fourth year. And then we need to consider how much is the mango sales price. So what are we selling each mango for? So we're going to have to make an assumption here. Let's say that each mango we can sell for $1.25. Okay, but after that, let's assume that our mangoes grow at the rate, the price of the mangoes grows at the rate of inflation, which is going to be equal to 3%, which we've input here. So we're saying that every year we're going to have consistent inflation of 3%. So we'll say that for the year of 2023, the sales price of a mango is just equal to the price from the previous year. Um, times one plus the inflation rate for that year. We can drag this column to the right using the little crosshairs in the bottom right corner. And so we'll see that the mango sales price is growing each year. And so for the revenue, we're gonna say that our sales is equal to the number of mangoes that we sold that year multiplied by the sales price per mango. And we can drag that formula all the way to the right again. But let's say that sometimes when we're selling our mangoes in grocery stores, we have to discount it, you know, 10% off, 15% off, etc. Let's make the assumption that on average, we're discounting our mangoes by 5% to sell them. So we're going to say equals a negative 0.05 multiplied by the sales. So in the first year, we're losing about $31,000 on discounts and allowances. And we can drag that to the right. And then our net sales for each year will just be equal to the sales plus the discounts and allowances. So here we have our net sales for each year. Now we need to consider our cost of goods sold. So we're going to start off with the raw material. So this would just be our mangoes. And let's say that we have to buy more mangoes than we actually sell because, you know, in the process along the way, some of them go bad. We just can't sell 100% of our inventory. So let's say that we purchase about 5% more mangoes than we actually end up selling. So that'll be um, I-16 multiplied by 1.05. And we can drag that to the right. And so each year we're just buying 5% mangoes, 5% more mangoes than we actually sold. And let's say that our mango purchase price, so the amount we're actually buying uh, the mangoes for, is um, a lot less than the sales price. I mean, if it wasn't, then we couldn't stay in business. So let's say we uh, buy each mango for about 65 cents the first year. And then just like the mango sales price, the mango purchase price increases with the rate of inflation each year. And there we have it. So there's our mango purchase price rising. So we can say that our raw material cost is just equal to the mangoes purchased multiplied by the purchase price of so the amount that we purchase each mango for. And we can drag that to the right. And then let's make an assumption that our shipping is about 8% of the actual raw material cost. So we'll, to have our vendors ship these mangoes to us, we have to pay about an 8% rate of shipping. And then we will drag that all the way to the right. So our total cost of goods sold, oh, sorry, this should actually be 0.08, not 1.08. And so our actual to total cost of goods sold will be equal to the raw materials plus the shipping cost. And then we can drag this one all the way to the right. So our gross profit for any given year is just equal to the net sales minus the total cost of goods sold. We can drag that all the way to the right. But now we need to consider our operating expenses. And so we need to figure out the wages of our employees. And to do that, we have to figure out, well, how many employees do we have? Well, let's say that the first year we have two employees and the company grows, but it still has two employees. And then the third year we have three. And then the last year we also have three employees. 
And we can say that, let's say the average salary the first year is $45,000, but then thereafter, that salary increases by the rate of inflation, just like the cost of our mangoes. And so we can drag this formula to the right to see the salaries increasing with inflation every year. So for wages, we can say that the total wages is equal to the number of employees multiplied by the average salary per employee. And we can drag this one all the way to the right. And let's say that our rent starts off at $40,000, and then it increases with inflation every year. And so we grab that, just like before, and then we drag this all the way to the right. And then the same thing goes for utilities, which we'll say is 20,000. And SGNA we'll say is 70,000. And then all of these are gonna increase with the rate of inflation. So I'm actually gonna lock this value into um, row 20 by hitting F4 uh, two times. And then I'm just gonna pull this thing all the way to the right again, and then all the way down, okay. So now we can see that all of these increase with the rate of inflation. Now we need to uh, sum all four categories to get our total operating expenses. And we can drag that all the way to the right as well. And then in order to calculate EBITDA, which is just earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, we just take the gross profit minus the total operating expenses. So this will give us our EBITDA for each year. But then to get from EBITDA to EBIT, we have to take out the DA, which is the depreciation and amortization. And so let's say we just have straight line depreciation and amortization on our equipment, and that each year our equipment depreciates by a value of $10,000. And because it's straight line, it does not change and is not affected by inflation. So in order to get EBIT, we take EBITDA minus the depreciation and amortization. And then we can go down to find uh, interest paid. And, and let's say we can make a similar assumption that interest stays the same every year, but this time we're going to assume that interest is actually uh, $15,000 a year and it does not change because we just took out a loan to start this business and it has a fixed payment each year. So to get to EBT from EBIT, we take, we just take out the interest paid. So we're going to see that the first year we're operating at a pretty heavy loss. So we need to figure out income taxes to get to net income. Well, in order to do that, we have to make an assumption about the tax rate. Let's say that the tax rate is just a standard 35% and the tax rate is expected to stay the same uh, every single year. Okay, so then our income taxes will just be equal to our EBT multiplied by the tax rate for that year. And then we can drag to the right. And then in order to find net income, we just take EBT minus the income taxes. So the first year that actually is a benefit for us and then all the following years it hurts us. And now we have our completed net income statement. We can see here on the bottom that in the first year we're actually losing money. We have a negative net income but the next three years we're actually making money. But the way that we've set up this income statement with all these formula driven uh, values we can actually make changes because it's set up dynamically to see how our income or our net income will change if we have different parameters. So let's take a look at uh, this year, year three, and the year 2024, for example. We're set to make about $50,000 and pay $26,000 in income tax. Well, what happens if we add a fourth employee? Well, we can see how now we're only going to make $18,000, but our income tax is less because we had lower EBT. Now let me change this to two. Now we're making nearly $80,000. So at any point along this income statement, we can make changes and see how those changes will flow through to the bottom line. I hope you got some value out of this video. Now, if you'd like to download the completed file I made in this video, check the link in the description for the file marked complete. Um, thank you for watching the whole thing, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions on anything that was discussed in this video. Now, have a good one.